we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at our baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people. And in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life and faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year-old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life.
Thanks be to God. Psalm 116, read responsively with you, wherever you may be. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I would fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, 
you cannot come. I give you a new commandment. That you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Just as I have loved you, so should you love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Those sentences are the heart of Monday Thursday. Yes, we wash feet normally on a normal Monday Thursday. We wash feet and we wash hands. Yes, we celebrate communion because this takes place at the Last Supper. But those certain, those verses, love one another as I have loved you, that is the Monday of Maundy Thursday. That is the mandate from which we get those words, Maundy Thursday. That's the mandate. Love one another. And what a mandate it is. What a command it is. Love one another just as I have loved you. Well, Jesus, I've got news for you. And you folks at home, I've got news for you too. Um, we can't. We can try. But infinite love comes only from an infinite source. God. And God's wellspring of love for you. The closest thing that I know of to this infinite love is the love that I have for my family. And the love that my family has for me. That might be the closest thing we can achieve to this sort of infinite love. Here's what I'm talking about before I, before I get too far off here. I love my wife. I love my children. And there is nothing that my family can do to separate me from loving them. There's nothing that they can do to separate me from loving them. It's unconditional in every way in which I am aware. It's intimate, it's personal, it's vulnerable, it's beautiful, it's full of forgiveness, and it's full of grace, and it's full of closeness. Now imagine that kind of love, which unfortunately not everybody has experienced from their parents, and which unfortunately not every parent has experienced, you know, has given that to their children. But the best case scenario, imagine that love, the best, closest love we can think of. God's love for you outstrips that. It's bigger than that. It's more infinite than that. It's more intense than that. It's more personal. It's more intimate. It's more vulnerable. It's closer than even that. God's infinite, eternal love for you is closer than even that kind of best parental love. It's an amazing thing. And it's a humbling thing to know that God loves us like this. And to feel that in our hearts calls us to do our best to fulfill this mandate of Christ. To love one another just as Christ has loved you. Boundless. Boundaryless. What would 
Jesus do? Do what Jesus did. Well, Jesus loved unconditionally. And that's amazing news. The sad news is, though, that we can't even come close. No matter what we try. But, God loves you regardless. Back to parents and children. I might get frustrated with my children sometimes. Oh, never. No, 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 it happens. My children might get frustrated with me. But I know that they will forgive me. I know that I will forgive them no matter what. Again, take that love times infinity. Because if there's one ounce of separation between finite and infinite love, there may as well be an infinite amount of separation because finite love can never quite measure up to that. Now, right now, we're all stuck at homes. Or, well, we should be stuck at home. Stay at home. Wash your hands. Today, wash somebody else's hands if you have somebody at home to do that. Later on in the service, there will be hand washing. You are invited to do that. If you don't have somebody at home with you, it's okay to wash your own hands, knowing that as you are washing your hands, God is washing your heart. God is continually washing you, giving rise to the new life in you through your baptism. Monday, Thursday. The mandate to love. The command to love. But really, the heart of that command for you to love others is that it comes out of just as Jesus loved you. Just as the living word loves you to infinity and beyond. That's the heart of Holy Week. Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil, Easter Sunday. That's the heart of it all, is that God started all of this with God's infinite love for you. God's infinite love for this world. God's forgiveness and God's mercy for you poured out for you on the cross, poured out for you in the cup of salvation, the body of Christ offered to you in communion. So we'll try to live up to this mandate. And we'll fail. And God will forgive us and call us to keep trying. Rest in the knowledge of God's love for you always, no matter what. The love that never ends.
On this night we have heard our Lord's commandment to love one another as he has loved us. We who receive God's love in Jesus Christ are called to love one another, to be servants to each other, as Jesus became our servant. Our commitment to this loving service is signified in the washing of feet, following the example our Lord gave us on the night before his death. I invite you now to use the bowl in your home and wash your hands and the hands of those who are gathering with you. Turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of love, unite your church in its commitment to humble service. Make us your faithful disciples. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us in self-giving acts of kindness. Let us love one another as you have loved us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, tend to flocks, fields, and vineyards. Bring favorable weather for crops to grow. Guide the hands of those who cultivate, farm, and garden. Let the earth flourish so that all may eat and be satisfied. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of love, you give us a new commandment to have love for one another. We give thanks for organizations that respond to disasters and for agencies that offer relief and humanitarian aid to populations in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
God of love. Give ear to all who call upon you for any need of body or spirit. Provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are unemployed or underemployed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of love, you invite us to your table of mercy. Heal all divisions between members of this assembly. Extend the hospitality of this table beyond these walls that your love and welcome be made known to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, glorify your servants who walked by faith in this life and who now feast with you. Inspire us by the sacrifice of those who were imprisoned, persecuted, or martyred for their faith. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, I miss communion. I miss celebrating the table with you, especially this night in this service when we read of that Last Supper. But did you know but the living word, who took on flesh in Jesus Christ, whom you receive at the communion table, is the same living word you receive in the gospel. The same living word through whom all things came into being is the same one who brings you salvation. Communion is a means of grace, a method wherein you receive forgiveness. Communion is not the only means through which God gives you mercy and brings us together. God chooses those elements of bread and wine, but forgiveness does not require them. We worship God alone, who alone saves, not this table. Nonetheless, I miss it. So let us thank God today for this powerful, this love, this living word, who saves. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, wherever you are, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you, now and forever. Amen.
all through Lent, and again through this Holy Week, I want us to think about offering not just in terms of our checkbooks or debit cards, but also offering in terms of what we can give to one another. A special message on this Mandate Maundy Thursday. How can we love others just as Christ has loved us? There's plenty of ways to serve, even in the midst of quarantine. I know we have members that are making masks. We have members that are hard at work still at the food pantry. We have members calling each other. We have members checking up on each other. We have members going grocery shopping for one another. What a wonderful thing to do. How can you serve and love one another just as Christ has loved you? We do continue to receive tithes and offerings throughout this Holy Week. And there is information posted below about how you can give electronically if you so choose. We appreciate every gift that you give to support our ministry here and in this world. Thank you. One closing word of announcement. There will be no drive-in service at the fairgrounds this Easter. It breaks my heart to give you that news. We had planned a joint service with Pastor Russ and the United Methodist Church in St. Paul out at the fairgrounds for sunrise, and it was going to be beautiful. And then this virus has gotten worse, and Grand Island is exploding with cases, and it's only a matter of time before it's here in our community. So out of caring for you, out of love, for you, doing what we can to protect our neighbors and our community, Pastor Russ and I have decided not to have our joint Easter service out at the fairgrounds. Like I said, it breaks my heart. I long to see each and every one of you. This is weird. And I don't know if it'll ever be not weird. But I know that you are there at home watching and worshiping with your neighbors all around St. Paul, and really all around this country and this world. I thank you for joining us, and I long for the day when we can be together again, not just in spirit and heart, but in body as well. Your church family, I, we love you, are thinking about you, and are praying for you.